I'm Chris Guns. Welcome to PBI Radio. Today, I'm excited. I'm always excited, but today I'm particularly excited because my guest today, former junior welterweight champion Sharon Bay Mitchell, little big man. Let's get right to it. Sharon Bay Mitchell, thanks for being here, man. Appreciate talking to you. Hey, no problem at all, man. Where Where were you born, Sharon Bay? Born in Washington, D.C. Man, what's it like coming up there in the 70s? <laughs> uh, I mean, it wasn't as bad. Cause, I mean, you're talking about you're in the nation's capital, man. So um, a lot of things was happening, but, um, you know, I really wasn't involved with it. I mean, you know, um, most of Washington, D.C. itself was uh, majority uh, white, not like it is pretty much now. Mm-hmm. No, so it was different back then? Oh, yeah, way different back then. Um, but um, it's getting back to, um, I think Washington, D.C. is actually getting back to, uh, you know, how they perceived it or wanted it to be. So, you know, yeah. a lot of changes happening. And tell me about the Mitchell household. Who was in it? Um, ma'am, I, you know, right now, I'm at, I just live a nice, simple life of, uh, you know, with my kids and, uh, my fiance and stuff like that. So that, that's it, man. You know, being a father, you know, to my, my young kids now, um, uh, so much that, you know, I, I wasn't able to be, you know, there at a lot of my events for my, my older kids, that, you know, are old now. So it gives me the chance to, you know, be that dad that I want to be now. Mm-hmm. And what about when you were growing up? What was that Mitchell household like? <laughs> <laughs> um, now that was different. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I grew up, my, 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 uh, grandmother, um, that actually just passed. She, um, she really raised me, uh, her and my grandfather. Um, so, you know, being in the house was, I was the only boy until my, my, actually cousin came on my, uh, on my mother's side, so I was the only boy in a house around four or five women, and, and on my father's side, I was the only boy until my little nephew came in. <laughs> so I, I grew up around women all my life. Yeah. So, what kind of kid were you? More, more gentle. Um, were you in the sports? Uh, uh, sports fanatic. I was a sports fanatic, very inquisitive, and you know, did a lot of uh, you know stuff. Uh, how my grandfather, uh, uh, you know, he was a carpenter, so you know he knew how to do fix it stuff. So that's that's why I, I learned a lot of that, and that's what I like. Did your grandfather like boxing too? Is that how you got it? Um, no, it, it, it's weird. I, when when I was a kid, I, I did all kinds of sports. I I, I um I was I, I love football more than anything. I love football more than I love boxing. I was better at football than I was really at boxing. Um, I was all county running back and all. Um, I mean, I was highly, highly scouted uh, to play high school ball, stuff like that. So, um, you know, uh, but boxing, my father went to school with my trainer and took me to his gym and just put me in there. And it was a sport, so I liked it. So your father got you into boxing? Yes, my father did. And how old were you when you first went to the gym? I was eight years old, man, when I went to the gym. Oh yeah, were you good? You weren't. Were you good right away? I would think you would be. <laughs> I was good. It, it, it was funny. I, I was good because uh, uh, a year later, um, I turned nine. Um, probably was my first year. I, I went on my first trip, and my first trip was uh, the Ohio State Fair, and. Mm. I, I won it. I was the only one out of my whole gym to win it. We always took like about 10 to 15 people to Ohio, but I was the only one to come back to win it every year. And I won it the most times out of anybody in the history, and that's six times in a row. Wow. So what were you nine years old when you first won that, Ohio State? Yeah, I was nine years old when I first won it. Wow. Nine years old when I first won it, I was... Probably eight. I think I was eighty-five pounds. I think then eighty-five or ninety-five pounds. And the last time I won it, I was a um, hundred and six pounds. I think, and I fought Arthur Gotti. My last I time I won it. Yeah. You beat Gotti in the amateurs. Yep, I, I beat him in a championship. 
<laughs> and and what'd you think of him then? I, he was just like he was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he, he, he kept coming. I, and I knocked him down. And it was funny. I knocked him down in the first round. And then, um, you know, it, it was crazy after that. Wow. I never knew that. See, I'm Can glad. you hold on one minute? Yep. <laughs> was Gotti more of a boxer then? I heard he was more of a boxer as an amateur. Uh, yeah, until uh, he was the same way. You could be a boxer, man, but when he got in the thick of it, he was ready to fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so um, it is the same thing, man, you know. Um, but we fought until the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After I knocked him down the first round, um, he got up and fought me. Mm -hmm. Did you feel his so, power then? Oh, um, God, he was a great guy, man. You know, we 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 had the same trainer. Um, was the end of my career. Um, we used to uh, on the Sundays when we were off. We used to go play golf together. So, I, you know, he was a great guy. No, oh, that's cool. Well, I never knew that. Never knew that. Would you Would you think of where were you when you heard he passed away? Actually, I was I was home and I was just I, it was kind of funny because I didn't. I I didn't. Uh, the God, he wasn't that kind of person to me. Like they say, he killed himself or he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. He just didn't seem like that that kind of a person. But I mean, you know, nobody. You know, when you're on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. it it could be one thing, and when you're on the inside looking in, it, it's a whole another thing. Yeah, people definitely show you what they want you to see too. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I know in 1985 you won the 106 pound national junior national Olympics. You beat Paulie Ayala there too, huh? <laughs> I sure so, did, man. <laughs> it was weird in my career, man. I, I fought in the in, in the averages. I fought a lot of people. With people, with, I mean, you know, we all came up all at the same time. Yeah, and you're lucky. You know? That's what made you so good. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Especially as an amateur, man, I had that long amateur career. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, you know to gain that kind of experience, and um, and for me to sit out for a year as an amateur, um, um, a lot of people don't notice. I, you know, I, I sat out for a year because um, my association wanted me to turn novice, but and I didn't want to turn novice. I just wanted to go right to open, but I was too young. Mm. And um, I think when I turned uh, 14 or 15, they let me uh, turn open, and I was able to fight all the grown men and stuff like that. So that's when I went to the uh, to the, uh, the nationals, and I, I went to the, um, the Olympic festival trials, and I won that. And it wouldn't um, in in 80. Seven. Mm -hmm. I had to get permission actually to go to the the um, the Olympic festival. Mm -hmm. I won the bronze in the Olympic festival, and um, they, they wouldn't let me go to the. They weren't gonna let me go to the box off at first. They weren't gonna let me go to the trials, but I I, I got permission to be able to do all of that. Mm -hmm. You were a prodigy. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, it was funny because I, I think that the the. In, in 1980, I, I think that I knew I wasn't going to go to the Olympics because they had their eye on um, um, Kelsey Banks. Mm -hmm. That was the man to go because he had been there so long. And, um, and I was like the newcomer. and They would never let us fight each other. Um, so um, I, I knew I would lose, but I lost to Kevin Kelly in the, in the trials. Mm -hmm. another, another great fighter. But yeah. I lost to him by one point in the trials, man. <laughs> yeah, we look like, uh, we're, and it's funny because me and Kevin Kelly was roommates everywhere we went internationally. Mm -hmm. And um, we had the same style. We had the same style all the way to the same, um, actually, exact uniform on. And um, it, it was weird. It was, it was like watching two people with the same exact style and throwing mm. the same exact punches. I think he beat me out by like a, like two or three punches or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I had the honor of talking to Kevin. Him and you, uh, I love both of you guys. I didn't even know that you guys were, were all that close. But yeah, I see, I, see, I see the similarities in the styles too. Yeah, that, that, that 
was my man and um and Am just man. We 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 stuck together like glue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad I got to talk to or he he actually talked to me. <laughs> I didn't do much talking. <laughs> oh no. Nah, that that's Kevin. <laughs> now he, he he now he don't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta let him go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you'll get it all out of <laughs> So you fought Kevin Kelly, fought Paulie Yala, Arturo Gotti. Who else you fight in the amateurs? Uh, man. You're lucky you came around that time. You can't name I probably fought them all. I. Mm. You fought them all. What, what do you think about the Olympics? Or what, what did you think about the Olympics this year and, and how amateur boxing in America is going now? Uh, um, how talentless well, it Well, yeah. Well... After '88, mm -hmm. you know they changed the whole scoring of of boxing, and the, and then it changes your whole style of boxing. Mm -hmm. The way that they fight now is is not how we fight. Yeah. You 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 when once you turn pro, you have to totally change the whole entire way that you fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and and as an American. Our American kids, I can't even blame them because our American kids cannot adapt to that cover up punch, you know, that the way they do things now. Mm -hmm. um, I thought they was going to left field when they started talking about, you know, the, the um, person got to hit the button at the same time and, yeah. you know, we're going to start scoring like that. And that's, that's absolutely crazy. That's not boxing. Mm hmm. And they only have one second to press the button. Like, come on. Right. Muscle. How, how are three people going to press the button at the same time and really going to see that same punch? Mm -hmm. Especially when you got four sides of the ring. Yeah. And you got to get it in on time, too. That's ridiculous. My point is that. that and it's not boxing, man. It, yeah. It's not boxing. Because that's what, when those people from overseas, they're great at it because I guess that's their style. But mm -hmm. when they turn pro, that's why they get beat up. Yeah. Although when you come over to America, we dominate. Yeah. And, but you saw it in the Olympics this year, like how outclassed they looked. You know, oh, they just looked. I mean, if you see, you 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 be like, uh, he didn't lose that fight, but mm -hmm. you know, to them he did. Yeah, yeah. The the judging, the every, everything's got to be changed in the. Uh, oh yeah, definitely system. for for us to be able to compete. Yeah, definitely. And, and was it hard for you not to make the team, the eighty eight team? Nah, I was I was the youngest one on the team at the time. Yeah, I was the youngest one. I was I just turned sixteen. Mm -hmm. But you got I was the youngest summer. one on the team. Uh, oh. Me and Mark Mark Tushak Johnson was the two youngest on the team. We had to get permission to, to be able to even be there. Wow, what did you think of his father, Ham? Oh, that was my man. Mm -hmm. Ham, Ham from DC. I mean, you <laughs> know, that was my boy. Yeah, he's tough, huh? Ham is a yeah. tough guy. And you actually went to college after missing the team, right? Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, I do, man. Um, Let these kids know about education, Sharon Bay. No one's getting educated I, no more. Well, it, it, it's weird. I, you know, um, it's something I'm going to try to start up here and go to my public schools and try to bring uh, boxing back into schools as an academic sport. Because, I, you know, I, our, our sport is great. And <clears> our sport... <throat> gives you a lot of money and you make a lot of money. I've made a lot of money in it, but you have kids that don't know how to manage it, don't know what to do with it, and, you know, don't have that kind of background to be able to teach them more. They don't have the knowledge. And the the, 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 the other thing is that um, I'm so mad at boxing because boxing really doesn't bring back their own. You have all these boxing shows. You got ESPN, you got USA, you got, mm -hmm. you got, uh, uh, you know, uh, HBO, you got Showtime and all of them, and then you have all these analysts that's on TV, but n absolutely none of them never do a punch in their life. And I don't care what anyone says. You can read all the books, you can be around boxing all your entire life, and until you do it, you really, really don't know what you're talking about too much. Mm. No. No. Until you in the thick of it, it's you really don't know what you're talking about too much. You might know a little bit, and I give them that, but bring, why don't bring back your own? And that's what I love about the NFL, mm -hmm. NBA, all these other sports. They bring it back their own. Yeah, 
Yep. And we don't go back and capture our own, and, and, and that's what's bad. It's sad. And you know, it's bad, away. especially for the ones that really can talk and the ones that really are intelligent. Yeah. No. No. You I, know, I understand that, you know, you're getting boxing. You, you know, you, you, some, some of them you can't understand. Mm-hmm. Some of them can't think right. Or I understand all that, but those ones that are trying to do it or mm-hmm. submitting applications and stuff like that, why not give them a chance? Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of boxers do have have injuries, or, or you know, they they for whatever reason can't can't speak clearly or intellectually. You know, but but there are some like like you and I know Ivan Robinson and Kevin Kelly could do it. You know. Why not keep bringing hey, those people back who who can voice? My point is that. Yeah. Oh, you speak of Ivan Robinson. Man, Ivan Robinson. I uh, fought him that's my buddy. <laughs> three times. Yeah, wow. As an amateur. <laughs> do, you, do you talk to him anymore? Yeah, I beat him twice and he beat me once. Yeah, he's great. Great, great guy. <laughs> that was my buddy too, man. Yeah, I talked to him a lot. He actually got into promoting. He did an event. Really? He got, he did a an amateur boxing event I think in in uh, Philadelphia with concerts oh, okay. and everything. Second annual, so just started. Okay, okay, it's good, mm-hmm. good yeah. thing. Yeah, good guy. And, and how'd you get the name Little Big Man? You got that in college. Well, yeah, well, right? um, <laughs> they did a the, the University of Maryland did a um, did a story on me in the magazine and. Um, they called. They said, "Hey, got the little big, the little big man on campus." <laughs> and I and I said, "Little big man." I said, "This ain't a bad little nickname." So I, I kept it, so it stuck with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and that was out of a, the Maryland, the, I think the Maryland Sun or the Maryland something. That I know it was the school newspaper. They called me the little big man on campus. So that's how I got the the, the nickname, little big man. Wow. So so. When did you decide to turn pro, and at what point? When I lost in the trials, and um, mm-hmm. when I lost in the trials right after the Olympics, and when I turned, uh, I was able to sign my own contract and turn uh, eighteen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I decided mm-hmm. to turn pro. I actually, my birthday is August twenty seventh, and I turned pro. That I had set the fight up, but I couldn't sign my contract until I turned eighteen, and mm-hmm. um, I fought in September. Wow! Yeah, so your birthday's coming up a little more than a week away from your forty-second yep. birthday. What happened, man? I can't believe that I'm talking to Sharon Bay Mitchell and he's forty-two years old. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's been but six it's funny, years I still since you were. People like, man, how old are you? I'm like forty-two, man, God, you're like you're thirty-something. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, it's amazing, man. But I guess it means yeah. that we all got older, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, right. So you did turn pro. Do you remember who it was against and, and where it was and what the result was? Eddie Colon. I mm-hmm. fought Eddie Colon, man, um, my first fight. And, mm-hmm. and, and what's funny about that is that I was so anxious to fight. They wanted to put me on ESPN. And I was so anxious to fight. I was so nervous. I made them put me <laughs> Put me on early. I was like, man, I want to fight. I'm ready to fight. So they threw me in. Wow. They threw yeah. me in early and then on ESPN. <laughs> so your your first fight was televised. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't even. Top, I, didn't... Yeah, I was a top rated uh, amateur. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah. coming out of the amateurs, and um, I was with Frank Gale, and and Frank Gale was with you know top right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. And that that was the first. I, I that's why I, I had the USA contract. I was fighting mm-hmm. on Tuesday night fight. That's why yeah. all my fights was on Tuesday night fights or ESPN. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing you all the time when you were young, but I didn't know it was your very first pro fight. Wow, man. Yeah. And yeah. How, how'd you feel after getting that first pro win? Were you nervous at all with the cameras there and everything? Nah, I was. I wasn't nervous. But I was nervous. I was nervous, just, ready to get into just the fight. Just anxious. <laughs> yeah. That was it. And how many people showed up for that first fight? Oh, that was in that was in Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. So I what, fought like on um four thousand. I don't know if I fought on a Mickey Ward card. Isn't that funny? I mm. fought because I was with Mickey Ward. We was at the um at the um Hall of Fame. And I said, you know what, Mickey man, I 
I remember fighting on your card. That's how mm-hmm. that's how young I was when I turned pro. Yeah. <laughs> what was that the last Hall of Fame where Mark Johnson got in? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So you made it yeah. for Mark, huh? Yeah. Wow. And, and how do you feel after getting that first pro win? You were, must have been ecstatic. <laughs> oh man, I, I mean, you always pumped. Yeah. You know, but um, you know, you have to go on from there. Yeah. And you fight a guy early in your career, Ar- 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 Artadius Acevedo. What do you remember about oh, yeah. him? Was he a bronze medal winner in, in the Olympics, actually? Um, you know Stadis? what? I think so. Yeah. I think uh, he was. Artadius Acevedo. Was. And he wanted to, and he wanted to fight me bad. Yeah. And you gave it to him. Yeah. <laughs> what do you remember about fight that fight? Me really bad too. What do you remember about that guy? I'm, I'm trying to, I, 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 I ain't got to remember. He, uh, he was a tough little fighter. Mm-hmm. Really? He was a tough little fighter. Uh, I think I was just so anxious and so young to shoot. Yeah, you just, you would drown everyone in talent. Huh? When, when you're fast <laughs> like you, you, you just never got touched. You know? Yeah, a couple of fights after that, you fought a guy, Dana, Dana Rostin. Do you remember anything about that guy? Oh, yeah, man. What do you remember? Probably was, I fought him, uh, I think I fought him in Maryland, right? Mm, not, I'm not sure right now. Maryland? But it could have been. I was think it, that was in. Maybe I, D.C. I, or Maryland. I, if I came, if I remember, I think that was in Maryland. Um, and if that was that fight, then that probably was one of the, one of the worst fights of my life. I, I, I don't know what I was doing in that fight. No, oh, yeah? Wow. I'm surprised. That was your 12th pro fight. And I think he had a... I think he was a pretty good amateur too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe he was maybe he was just skilled. Maybe. <laughs> and, and what was your mind frame like after getting that win, though? Were you, were you a serious athlete at the time? Or were you getting by on natural talent? And uh, well, no uh, you know what? To be honest with you, man... I, I, like I told you before, man, I, I was better at football than I was at boxing. Mm-hmm. Um, God gave me a talent. Um, I didn't have any family members or anything like that that was in boxing or anything like that. Um, and God just gave me a, a, a great talent. Yeah. Did you ever try I chose out? To, and I chose to use it. Yeah. Did you ever try out? For football at Howard University or anything? No, I didn't try. Actually, it's funny. I when I was going, I, I went to a school called Northwestern High School. Everybody knows Northwestern High School because Len Byers comes from Northwestern High School. We all went to school together. Um, his brother was graduated with me, but um, I played football for him, and I played one year in. I was getting letters to go to college, you know, from college to play football. That's how good I was at football. I was, wow. I mean, I was fast. I was coming out the backfield. I mean, hey, yeah, I played safety. Um, I, I was relentless. I was very, um, yeah, I was not scared of anything. Mm-hmm. I don't care how big you are and that, I'm going to hit you. Yeah. And that was me. That's incredible. 140-pound champion. And... and- you're out there playing football with those big guys. No, but was, <laughs> I was I was I was I was playing high school football and I was weighing 120 pounds, like 100. That's why I was fighting a 125 pounds and in in oh, amateurs. That's crazy. You're a natural. <laughs> and I was just that. You gotta understand how small I was in high school and how big these guys was. But yeah. you know, I was on the varsity. I played. I was on the varsity first string, starting. You are the little big man. That's what and you I was boxing. <laughs> you are the little big man. You earned hey, it. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and early in your career, you fought Rafael Limon. And yeah. he, he fought everybody. Hey, pass down, man. Three fights with Chacon. He fought Cornelius Boza Edwards and Chavez and Camacho. That was a tough fight, but he, he was getting older when you when you fought him, right? And, and Who's that? Limon. He was like older then. You got him when he was... Yeah, oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. But he, he must have been I was beating him so bad, he pulled my pants down. Yeah, he pulled your pants down. <laughs> How'd you feel, man? Getting, 
Were you embarrassed? Embarrassing on ESPN, man. Was it embarrassing? I had the bloopers <laughs> thing, so I started wearing yeah. suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, too. That, that was funny. It, it was on, like, shows that weren't even necessarily interested in boxing. Yeah. You know? It was everywhere. I didn't know how you felt about it. <laughs> uh, that, that, was, that, probably was, that was a funny moment to me. It was, I was mad at the time, but it was a funny moment. I was beating him so bad, he, he couldn't do anything else. Yeah. Yeah. So he pulled your pants down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think one of the older guys I fought, I fought Rocky Lockridge mm-hmm. um, at the Meadowlands. And he I, he probably was the one that hit me the hardest. Yeah. It hit me so hard. I, 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 I mean, it, that, I thought I was, I don't know where I was. Oh, <laughs> really, man. That's- Hard hitter. <laughs> oh yeah, what yeah. You, Rocky was. Man, what do you? What do you, do you ever hear anything about Rocky now? I don't. I hear he's not doing so good now. No, nah, he's not. And um, I saw the intervention. <clears throat> you know, playing mm-hmm. with him. I, I, and like I, and it, but it, that goes back to what I was saying is that you know, I would love to make it an academic sport because I, you know, I think, I, I think that. We owe it to our kids, even nowadays. I mean, I've grown up in it. I've grown up in both ends, and um, you know, now everybody comes like a lot of people think. I grew up with a silver spoon in my mouth. I tell them, you got to be crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I grew up with a silver spoon in my mouth. You know, I from the age of eight, my mom was on drugs. From the age of eight until she died. And she died last year, December, right before Christmas. And till then, she was on drugs until then. I've been a two-time world champion. Um, I've been on Olympic teams. I've done it all, but nobody would ever think that I grew up, you know, mm-hmm. with a mom that's been on drugs. Nobody would. You know what I'm saying? The things I was able to accomplish <clears throat> in life, I used my mom as an example, not to be like, yeah. uh, you know, I have kids now, now I, you know, I don't, I've never smoked, I, I drink maybe occasionally, it has to be a nice blue moon for me to smoke, I mean, for me to drink, um, I've never done drugs or anything like that, so therefore, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I think, Says you back. know, it's great examples out there for kids nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I didn't grow up with shit was from my mouth. So, you know, I mm-hmm. just know how to survive. And I know how to survive the right way. But the great thing with, when I was coming up and when we were coming up is that the sports was major and was big. When you got into, went to football, boys and girls club, you had an A team and a B team. Mm-hmm. Now you can barely put one team together. <laughs> That's true. No, no. You know, in no. the amateurs, man, when we used to go to the Ohio State Fair, I used to have to fight twice a day because mm. it was so packed, it was so full, we had so many people that we had to fight twice a day mm-hmm. to eliminate people. Yep, yep. Now they fight you once know? every three days. <laughs> once every two days. Once every... My, my every point, day. exactly. So, um, you know, the... Dynamics have changed with that, and probably, and probably a lot got to do with the government too. The government trying to run your household, mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, true. the government stopped trying to run your household, and let you run it itself. Remember how they got to pay their mom was beating their butt, and you know, and mm-hmm. they turned out to be okay. Our kids would be okay. Yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with a little spanking. <laughs> exactly, you know. And before that fight, though, you 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 fought uh you fought Billy Young, you fought Billy Young, and you fought him at the legendary Blue Horizon. How'd you like fighting? How'd you like fighting at the Blue? You, the, the Blue Horizon, mm. great venue, yeah. legendary venue. Yeah. That's the only venue I know that looks great on TV. Mm-hmm. Hella yeah. great on TV. You go inside of it, it's a dump. <laughs> is it? I've never been there. <laughs> Are you serious? I've never been there, man. Stop playing, man. man. I gotta go. Come on, how you gonna report on boxing? <laughs> You've never been to, to yeah. the Blue Horizon? Ridiculous. 
I feel I feel ashamed. <laughs> yeah, the blue horizon, man, oh man. Yeah. I heard it's a that, place. That, to be. that was the spot. Yeah. That was that was truly the spot. Yeah. Um especially for Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was truly the spot. Um great fights out of there, man. Yeah. And that's what we need. We need more great fights. Like um every seat is a great seat. <laughs> yeah. There's no bad Every seat in Blue Horizon. Yep, yep. And you could tell when the cameraman was up there. I could tell that's the place to be. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. Oh, those, yeah. those kind of places are disappearing around America, though. Like, it's important to get those places going again to get amateur boxing back and and turning into good pros the way they used to have. You know, like it is. It's a big man, part of getting kids involved. So many, like even back then, it was a lot of politics in mm. amateur boxing. Yeah. Um, um, and it's even worse now. Mm-hmm. And it's even worse now with the pro. Like I loved boxing when I was an amateur. It was a sport to me. But once you be trying to become a pro, mm-hmm. um, you know, then it's a job. Yeah. <laughs> true. It's true. <laughs> you know. And that was your first and then, time. And then you kind of disconnect from it from there. Yeah. First time you went 10 rounds, too. How'd you feel going 10 rounds? What you say? That was the first time you went 10 rounds, too, that night. You, first, you fought Billy Yeah, um, I had to get it? permission. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Mm-hmm. Wow. Because I, I was young. I was only 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They wouldn't let me. They would For a long time, they would not let me go more than eight rounds. Wow. So you got to get, get things going to, to amend you. <laughs> That's right, but were. then and then they gave me permission to go. T- my, I had my first ten round fight, man, <clears throat> and um, you know I had my ten round fight, and from there it was good. Mm-hmm. And you fought Robert Bird, easy fight for you, wasn't it? Yep. That that was the night that Bruce Seldon fought uh, David Bay. I think that was Tuesday night fights, wasn't it? Yep. And, and USA, because I was yeah. I, USA yeah. King. <laughs> Tell me about those days, though. How, how was it like fighting on Tuesday night fights and Sean O'Grady and Al Albert? It was almost like a natural thing, and I, I swear I wish USA would bring that back. <laughs> I know. I, I was thinking that. I miss Sean O'Grady, and I miss Al Albert. <laughs> I miss right, it all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What happened to Sean O'Grady? You ever talked to him? Because Sean O'Grady knew what he was talking about. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you're in the sport, you, you kind of know what you're talking about. You yeah, know, you like I said, um... You could tell they weren't fake. They weren't like jerks. They were they were fun and friendly guys. Right. right. And there was no fake. Right. Right. <laughs> Nothing fake about it. Well, it. Sometimes now I I'll watch boxing and I'll just turn down the sound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just watch the fight. Yeah. Listen to music and watch the fight. <laughs> right. Right. So how how do you feel uh, that that night though fighting Robert Bird, just an easy fight. Yeah, that's what I can't. I, I'll be honest. I can't even remember. No, okay. <laughs> do you not remember? Do you do you think that you have some some damage through boxing, or do you just it was just no? Nah, so some some fights are just not like yeah, real <laughs> out there for me. Like it's gonna come right to mind, and it, mm-hmm. you know, it's some fights that was it's very memorable to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I understand. You might just say something about it with Sarah Palmer. Oh, yeah. You know, I do You know why I asked that? I asked that because when I talked to Chris Bird, he was telling me about how his he has uh, like a weird burning feeling in his foot. And then I was talking to Montel Griffin, and Montel Griffin says he has a little few problems, but nothing major. I'm, I'm just curious, man. Lifers, lifers in the game like you, you know? Um, probably the only thing that I really have that. I can say that really come from boxing is I probably have arthritis in my finger sometimes. Mm. You know, that's great. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> um, the sport is was always for me is called hit and not get hit. And that's it. And I didn't like to get hit a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that gaudy kind of fighter. Yeah. You start hitting me too much then <laughs> one of us gotta go. <laughs> and <laughs> and I always tell guys, even now, you know, I knock on, and I still knock on wood when I say this, is that I'm glad that I've never, ever in my whole entire career been knocked out. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Never been knocked out, man. Mm-hmm. I've been stunned. I've been dazed. Never been knocked out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're knocked down, but I'm gonna get my ass up. Never, never fell asleep in the ring. <laughs> never fell asleep in the ring. Never. And it's a blessing that I've never, you know, fell asleep in the ring. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never had a Marlon Stalin moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. You know. Yeah. And you fought Kenny Bazemore on the big. Ready to go, Jesse yeah, man. Time. And you know, I didn't even want to fight Kenny Bazemore. No. That was the I night. didn't even want to fight him because Kenny Bazemore was such a crafty guy from mm-hmm. D.C., man. And I used to train under him, and I loved this style. And he was such a great guy. That was a friend of mine and all that stuff. And they asked me to fight him, and I told him, no, nah. I, I told him just like this. No, I didn't want to fight him. It's just like I told him I didn't want to fight Floyd because me and Floyd was friends. Mm-hmm. His mom loved me. You know, his mom... I, you know, his mom was a big fan of mine, so mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to fight him. Um, I didn't want to fight Lyndon Paul Walker. I didn't want to fight any of the guys that I kind of grew up with, yeah. kind of, sort of. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I didn't want to fight those guys, but they pressed me to fight them, so I did. Yep. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? And, and you I did, knocked you out Kenny Bazemore. Uh, I, I knocked out Paul Walker. <laughs> yeah. You know? They actually, they actually caught Kenny Bazemore. His mom was clapping for you. One night, one time. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the night. That was in D.C. Actually, right in his hometown. And that yeah, was it was in D.C. It was at um, RFK Stadium. It was the um, the first um, Roy Jones and um, and uh, Bernard Hopkins fight. So how were the fans? I was the you, you guys are both from D.C. Like who the fans come come out for? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was major big then. I mean, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, D.C. is truly my town. Yeah, yeah. And it's a big sports town. Everyone everyone knew Sharon Bay at the time. I, I knew you had more. <laughs> I knew you had more people. And that was the night Roy Jones fought Bernard Hopkins the first time, too. What did you think of that fight? What did you think of Roy Jones in those days? Were you close to him? Oh, me and Roy, cool. Mm-hmm. You know, um, when Roy was coming up in the 88 year, man, he, his people kept him hidden. And then he just came out of, like, nowhere. <laughs> yeah. no. He just came out of like nowhere, won the tournament, just got in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And just... Um, but Roy, Roy was, a, you know, was a cool guy. Um, all the people that you know, he kind of fought stuff like that. We were all friends because we was always on international trips together. Yeah. So many great fighters from those days. Um, yeah. I think we had the the best team out there. Yeah. All the yeah, all the guys that came out the eighty eight year. Yep. Uh, majority of the ones that didn't make good, our, our Olympic team was so good but you gotta remember the guys that didn't make the team all of them became world champions yeah, people out of that 80 yeah. a year yeah. people talk about 76 and 84 but they forget that in 84 they didn't fight tons of, of teams that, that were would have been a big threat you know man 88 80. we had more world champions yeah. come from that 88 team that did not make the whole Olympics yeah. um, and did make the Olympics that, like a lot of them that made the Olympics didn't really mount up to be anything. That's right. Kelsey Banks is yeah. really, yeah, yeah, um, he, he didn't do anything as, yeah. a, as a professional and um, I think he's a security guard now and mm-hmm. he, I hear that he really can't talk. Hmm. Well, no. that's sad but uh, I didn't, I didn't yeah. know anything about Kelsey Banks but the, as as a team though, the 88 team, right up there uh-huh. with the best, you know? Right up there with the best. Even 92 is good, but 88 was definitely up there. Never gets brought up. I, I think we had the, probably the best. The, the, the best fights come out of 88 years. And you said it. And, and do, are you still close with Riddick Bo? Speaking of 88? Yeah, man, I, 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 see Riddick, I, I see Riddick every now and then. He, he, he lives out this way. So I might bump into him right now and then, but, you know. Mm-hmm. And what do you think about Roy Jones continuous fighting? <laughs> he should stop that. and that's that's when it goes to show you that you know when you when when you don't know how to how to do anything else in life mm-hmm. um that's the only thing you resort to what you know and what you know is boxing um for me um yeah I, I just I know how to do too many things in life you know and I wouldn't let boxing consume my life yeah 
um, I wasn't pressured into boxing or pressured into fighting. So therefore, um, I'm not going to pressure myself into staying in it because of the money. Mm -hmm. I can make money as long as I have two legs and I'm walking and I still be able to talk. I'm going to be able to make money. That's it. And your next fight was against, after that Kenny Bazemore fight, you fought Chad Broussard, 35-0 and 0 at the time. This was yeah. on the undercard of the second Bo Holyfield fight. And what was it like fight on that card and against Chad that night, besides quick? Uh, that hmm. was just, that was, yeah, that was one of those, I, you know, you, you, you had the stage to shine on. Hmm. Um, this is your time to shine, and you better come through, and, and that's what I did. Um, and, and that fight is weird because uh, after the fight, I'm walking um, with my belt, and I'm going to go, I think, up to my hotel room to do something, and Lou Gossip Jr. comes up to me and says, man, you know, I watch you all the time, and you're one of my favorite fighters, and that was the only, probably the only time in life I've ever been starstruck. Wow, Lou Gossett. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. How'd it feel to finally hold that belt? You know, you're the NABF lightweight champion. How's that feel, holding that title? Um, it was great, but I always, you know, for me, it was, yeah, come on, just, just think, look what my, look what my record was. Mm, I know. Yeah. It just, you know what I'm saying? You had your eyes on bigger my things. If my record was that, and if my record was that, and if my record was that now, I would have mm -hmm. been a world champion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. So just understand how, how hard it was and how deep <clears throat> our, uh, our boxing was back then. I know it. That I, I, I you at at that kind of with that kind of record, you don't get a world title shot. You just got you, 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 mm. you NAB F title. That was just a right to go twelve rounds, I guess. <laughs> My point exactly. Now, did you did you make and, it to and that? And I was young too. Yeah, yeah, I know it. And did you make it to the main event that night, Fan Man? And, and what's going through your mind when Fan Man comes down? <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> that was the funniest. The funniest thing, I, me and um. Actually, me and um, Donnie Simpson was actually sitting together. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I forget her name, actress Sharon, Sharon, I forget her name. She was sitting in front of us and she had, and you could see all her cleavage. Wow. <laughs> so you're not even watching the thing. <laughs> he was talking about that. <laughs> so who gets more ladies, you or Donnie Simpson? <laughs> <laughs> a blue eyed band. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you have to say about that Bo Holyfield trilogy? Like maybe the best heavyweight trilogy in terms of action. Ali Ali Fraser yeah, too def wasn't definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. I, there's nothing there. nothing's gonna be better than that trilogy. Yeah. And you always want to see that fight. Yeah. Were you were you friends with Evander Holyfield too? Um, not really friends with Evander. I knew Evander, but he we wasn't friends. Mm. <laughs> nah. So after you turned pro, you you run your record to thirty one and zero, and then came Levander Johnson. He's twenty one and zero with a draw, and he stops you in eight. Take me back. I wasn't even there for that fight, man. I didn't train. I didn't do anything. I I, I was just so frustrated with with. Management and mm. not getting a title shot, and um, I, I didn't even train for that fight. And you know, I, I did it to myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I blame yeah. no one. I, I, I did it to myself because for real, I could have knocked him out. Actually, I really had him out. I just couldn't finish him. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel afterwards, looking at your record, and, and it's not perfect no more? Um, it was what it was. I, like I said, I, you can't, I couldn't blame. I don't, I'm not into that blaming your trainers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've always said that the only person that can beat me is me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How'd you feel when you were watching Lavander a few years later fight Jesus Chavez and he ended up losing his life? What goes through your mind when you heard he passed? <laughs> um, it was tragic, but you know when the the, the way that. <laughs> The van that lived his life, it was always reckless. Um, you know, um, it, I, and I knew him, and 
you know, we we were the enemies. We was we was friends. You know, we would speak to one another and stuff like that. But you know, when you live a reckless life, something like that may happen. Yeah. And it, it's a sad moment, but um, you know, it, it, it may happen. Yeah, yeah. And you reap what you sow, I guess. And yeah. you return three months later against unknown eleven and zero, little but bad Stevie Johnson. Do you feel like that like was the in, worst stoppage of anyone? Yeah. I, I get hit. I back up on the ropes. I come off the ropes. The ref, I would do my eight count and call the fight off. Yeah. How'd you feel in there up it, to that point, though? You felt like I was pissed then. Yeah. Now that one, I was pissed, and 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 the ref. Remember, he killed himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why he killed himself? I think. Hmm. He was taking too much under the table. My, he, I, 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 he, that was fixed. I know that was fixed. I, I mean, I went in the fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And because I get hit and I go back on the ropes, I come off and you give me a count and then you tell me no. I, and you stop the fight. Mm-hmm. That's almost worse than when uh, uh, you still stop the fight when I for the um, Floyd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you catch me good, good punch. I take a knee. I get up. I walk to you. And you tell me nah. <laughs> How 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 prevalent do you think um like like payoffs and bribes are in boxing? I think it's prevalent. They're there. I, I, I don't. It's not as much as people think. I don't think they were there. Um, with probably some people, some things, but um. Uh, they, they may be there. I just don't know of any. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I always said that with that Stevie Johnson fight, that <clears throat> it was. I think that the ref, you know, he he, he took some money for that. I really think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it was just weird. Like a year later, you you, you kill yourself. Mm-hmm. Why would you kill yourself? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you did yeah. somebody wrong. Somebody, somewhere, went wrong. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. It's true. And and why did you never go after a rematch with Stevie Johnson? Oh, I wanted to. Trust me, I did. Yeah. They never would do it. Oh, okay. They knew it was a gift. Mm. Believe me, they knew it was a gift. Oh, I wanted to. Yeah. yeah. And where are you when you look at your record now? Like a hundred days earlier, you you are thirty one and zero, and now you got two losses on your career. You, you keep on when you believe yourself as a champion. Mm-hmm. You 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 get up and you keep on kicking, and that's what I did. Did you make Did you make any changes in your in your preparations or anything? Um, I I stayed mm-hmm. focused. Yeah. That's what I did. And I stayed more focused on what I needed to do into the ring and stayed more um, not focused on the outside of, you know, the negotiations and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that's when I got the mind was it where come in front of me, I'll fight them. I don't care who I fight. Mm-hmm. And you prove that when you fight them all and I'm going just going to beat them down. Yeah, you said it. And, and, and four months later? This time you, you return again and you beat Lyndon Walker and Wayne Boudreaux. And then you end up getting in the ring with another future champion, Taran Millette, when you when his opponent didn't show up and your opponent didn't show up. So you didn't like that. each other. Yeah. So you knew him from him today. I can, from I can him tell today, you that too. one like, it's like yesterday. Mm-hmm. We're in, a, we're, we're in uh, Vegas. His opponent don't show up, my opponent don't show up. He's talking shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he said something out of his mouth and I said, I'll beat your ass. Uh, I said, matter of fact, Don, sign him. I'll fight him now. Mm-hmm. And um, they put the fight together. Yeah. They put the fight together. And I told that punk I was going to knock him out. And that's exactly what I did. Mm-hmm. Did you, did you, you knew each other well from the amateur days, right? He was a... Uh... Nah, I didn't know him from the amateurs. Oh, no? no? I thought you, I thought you would have. Cause he was... I, I didn't know him from, I, I, we, I, for some, we didn't like him. <clears throat> He thought he was this gangster from we from Chicago or something. I think he's from uh, he's from uh, DC, DC, ain't he? No, 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 not DC, not DC, not DC. Um, Taramalis from uh, where Corey Spinks is from. That's where. St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis. Kept, kept in gangster. 
<laughs> and you gotta understand, I'm, I'm from DC, so we got another kind of mentality. Yeah. And um, you know, you you can't say and do whatever you think you want to do with not with me. Mm. It wasn't happening that way, so he got what he asked for. Yeah. And and you, he dropped you, right? And then you got up. Nope. He did not drop me. Didn't drop you. Uh, nope. Thought it said he dropped you. Nope. I'm sorry. He, he barely touched me. Okay. And, but and, didn't I knock him out with the second round? Uh, I thought it was the first round. Yeah, first oh, round. Oh yeah, first round. Yep. Mm-hmm. First round knockout. So he didn't he didn't touch you at all. Didn't touch me. No. I was so mad in that fact, but I know how to stay in control. It was just like um, I fought another guy from DC that we didn't like each other, and I told him the same thing. I was going to knock him out. Matter of fact, I didn't even tell him. I, I told him that I wasn't going to knock you out. I was going to punish him. Mm. And 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 that's what I did, and that was um, um, uh, I fought him on uh, what fight him on ESPN or I fought him on USA. Mm-hmm. Can't remember. I thought it was ESPN two. Not ESPN. Could have been. It might have been two. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I thought I, I talked to Taramalet one time, and I think it was on ESPN. That's what I thought about. Yeah. I thought oh, so. Yeah. And, and so after losing two times back to back to Stevie Johnson and, and, and or Stevie Johnston and Lavender Johnson, you got some good wins. I remember you were talking you you were frustrated at the time not getting a title shot though. How frustrated exactly, was it to be? I mean you thirty and old yeah. you don't get a world title shot? Yeah. And to to have a great amateur background. I, because and, I didn't want to sign with none of the big time from those I was trying to do you know my own thing mm-hmm. but that's when the politics yeah I got told politics yeah. so you were just trying to stay a free agent and away from why, why get involved I can do my own thing mm-hmm. how frustrating was it though to, to have such an extensive amateur background and to, to have been televised in your first pro fight and to be clearly as talented as you are and, and now you're, you're you got more than 40 wins Still only two losses, and you still can't get a title shot? Well, I mean, it was always frustrating. But I had to always kind of keep my eye on the prize. And that's what I ended up doing. Yeah. And, 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 and finally, after, after winning 11 more in a row after losing those two, you finally get the chance to fight for a title. You fight Khalid Rahilu in France. He's, adopted, he's an adopted, adopted Frenchman, actually. How'd it feel to, to go to France? How'd they treat you there? Oh, great. <laughs> I mean, you'd have thought I was from France. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd have thought I was their fighter. I mean, I, I, the first class. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, they, they, they treated me first class. Okay. Um, I, it, it's nothing bad I can say about, you know, that, that, that partnership in Paris. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was great. Yeah, and you won the WBA championship that night. Tell me about the tell me about the fight. Hello? Yeah, what'd you say? I, I'm sorry. Just tell tell me about the fight tell me about the fight itself with Khalid Rahilu. Um I mean it was a great fight. I, I well it was funny. When I, I saw him fight uh Frankie Randall on, on T V um the first thing I said, I called Don King. I said, man, I want to fight him. Like, I know I can beat him. Mm-hmm. The first thing I said, I, I know I can beat him. Sean, man, come on, man. You th-. I said, look, I know I can beat him, man. Just give me the chance. Mm. He gave me the chance. <laughs> I, um, I trained. I, I was in training camp. I was training at, like, Six o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning I was dreaming. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you be hungry. <laughs> I, and I, I went over there and, and and did what I needed to do. Yeah. And was that your first time ever in France? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and Khalid Rahilu said after the fight, he said that you were the fastest guy that he ever saw in his life in the ring with him. So that's got to feel good hearing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, 10 years and a month after turning pro, you're a champion. How's it feel to be holding that belt? 
Did you even put it down that night? <laughs> it, it, it's the greatest thing ever, but, you know, you don't really feel, it, it, I, I didn't really feel it. Like, when I got home, mm. it, it really hit you. <laughs> like, wow, you know, hey, you're a world champion. Yeah. Did you did you feel like like the the way life was? Did you feel a change? Um, yeah, no. I always kind of live a simple kind of life. You have people that want to come around, but I always kept maybe one or two people with me all the time. I wasn't that person that kept a whole big entourage of people and stuff like that because I didn't believe in that. Uh, I I, be I believe in family. Family being around each other. Mm -hmm. And at that time, did you just did you feel more pressured to get in those big money fights after that? Um, well, to, to get the big money fights, I knew they would come because I'm the champion. So therefore, you you know you kind of have to you know come after me. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the, you know the big money fights would come, but it wasn't more so getting the big money fight at the one time, and I never did that. That's why I always took four or five fights a year. And, you know, by the time I'm collecting 100 here and 200 there and 300 there and uh, go back and do 100 there, I'm at, you know, I'm, I'm getting almost five, six hundred mm -hmm. um, or almost a million a year. Mm, that's beautiful. I'm making that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that wasn't no real big mm -hmm. thing with me of trying to get it all at one time. So your so your big thing was was just looking for greatness. Did you did you did you want to make the Hall of Fame? Get me busy. That's why I had over sixty something pro fights. Is it important to you to to have made the Hall of Fame when you're fighting? Was that important to you? It, 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 that, that's the, the greatest thing is you know to make the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, just like. Um, this November, um, I'm getting inducted into the um, Babe Ruth um, Merlin Sports Hall of Fame here in November. But, you know, as a fighter, I mean, to get recognized for any Hall of Fame, but to get recognized for home Hall of Fame first is a great mm -hmm. thing. But the greatest thing is, you know, your International Boxing Hall of Fame. Yeah, that would be amazing. And, you know, Congratulations. I think with a record of mine and the people that I fought and the things I went through, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I should get it. Yeah, yeah. And you, you you did win the championship, and you make your first two defenses at home in D.C., and you dominate Pedro Saiz, and you win a 12-round decision against Reggie Green. That was a tough one, right? Tell yeah, Reggie, because he was another hometown. Mm -hmm. But I gave him a shot. Yep. And that's all I can do. I'm going to give you a shot. Mm -hmm. I wasn't being selfish. Yeah. Did you? He was a good fighter. So I gave him a shot. Did you want to fight him, or it didn't matter to you? Um, for me, then, I didn't, but, you know, for a homie to be able to get a shot at the title, if I had to go that way, then I'd give him a shot. But I wasn't I wasn't going to lose to anyone, absolutely anyone, in my hometown. That does not happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wasn't doing that one. I mean, big fights kept kept eluding you for now, though. You fought Elio Ortiz. You you fought him on the big Lewis Holyfield two card. Uh -huh. What was that like fighting on that night, fighting that guy? Um, <laughs> Elio that was Ortiz. Weird cause I got cut over the eye. Yeah. I couldn't really see. Um, he was a big, hard hitting, slow guy, and it was weird because I couldn't see. But um, my trainer, my cut man, Jeff said, if you can see a little bit blurry. It just watch his wild punches. I thought I was timing the way he was punching, mm -hmm. and when he would throw his wild punches, I would, I would duck. But by the time I came up, I think I came up too fast that he would hit me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, um, it was a great fight because I had one of the guys that um, I grew up with um, that ever did my first ever interview with me. He reported the fight, and that was James Brown. Mm -hmm. Um. He did my first ever interview on uh, Channel 4 back then um, in D.C. And um, we was always friends. We were great friends mm -hmm. um, since I was 10 years old with me and James Brown being friends. And um, he did the fight that night. So it was great that, you know, I had him doing the fight that yeah. night. 
It's always fun to hear James Brown doing a fight too. I don't know. I don't know why they don't use him more. He should be more in the yeah. more in the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. And that is that why you didn't fight for ten months? Because that cut. How many how many stitches you get on that cut? Um, no, I didn't fight for ten months because I was training um, before I fought Kali Ryu. For that title, um, I uh, that's when I uh, I um, did my knee. I had to get knee surgery. Oh, did you? I, thought I you... tore I tore the ligaments in my knee in um, in ninety eight. Oh, okay. Hmm. And then I, I, I no in ninety seven. I'm sorry, ninety seven. I tore the ligaments. I had to sit out that ten months. And then I you know I came back. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Okay. And you fought one time in the year 2000. You won a 12-round decision over Felix Flores. You right. Were, you were down in round four. What happened when, when, when you got caught with that? <laughs> I went to sleep <laughs> for a second. <laughs> I, I, I swear I did. I would, I, it was so boring. I went to sleep for a second. hit me with an elbow cut. Mm-hmm. And um, I went on the floor. And when I got on the floor, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I got up and I box this lights out. That's when Floyd Floyd came back to my dressing room. He said, Man, you know what I mean? I swear, I thought the fight I said he said, Man, I thought the fight was over there. I said, Man, the fight will be over there. He said, Man, you got up and I thought I was the only one that could slip punches like that, man. What you was doing, I was like, Come on, man, you know how I am <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that, that you fell asleep in there. I, I said how you, you never fell asleep in the ring. <laughs> you no, fell asleep I, without I, getting punched. I, I, I was, because my buddy, but when Buddy used to train me, Buddy used to say, um, when you're fighting, Sean Bay, you just kind of like, like you're falling asleep, like you're getting bored in the fight. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, so I remember one time I'm, I came back to the um, corner. He said, man, Sean Bay, wake up. Wake up, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to wake up. Yeah, Buddy McGirt. So, yeah. Great yeah, trainer. So, Great trainer. Um, you know, I get like a day good and they were, you know, my mom was like bored and I'm not doing a lot. And um, I just slipped down one time and he hit me with up cut at the same time and I did knock me down. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you about Buddy McGirt later in the interview, but what, what kind of, what, what makes him such a great interview? Man? Or, or great trainer, sorry. <laughs> he's a great interview too. Buddy, because he's been in it. I, I loved Buddy when he was a fighter. But yeah. Buddy, you know, between the pads and being able to kind of sort of know, you know, the strengths of some people and stuff like that. I, that buddy is good at that. Yeah. Great motivator. Great motivator. Oh, great. Um, so, um, you know, yeah. it's all in the fighter that he has. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you need you need the fighters to be able to accept the information you give them though, and actually put it to fruition. Now, you know. You, and finally, you get that shot at Kasha Zoo. What, what do you think of Zoo before the fight? What'd you say now? Sorry? You finally got that shot at Kasha Zoo in a big, big time fight. And, and what, what did you think about Kasha Zoo before you fought him? Um, I, I thought he was a good fighter. Um, to fight him and have. My my knee was totally shattered inside, mm. which I didn't know until like after. Mm. Um, he, uh, I mean, everybody always asks me the same thing: Does he hit hard? No, mm. I didn't really get hit that much for him to, you know, to really feel punch. I, you know, I, I, um, you know, I faded a lot of punches, laid a lot of punches. You know, I, I turned shoulders and stuff like that. So, I, I, I don't take anything away from him. He's a great gutsy fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, Rough fight. Yeah, I mean, you know, Kasuzu was Kasuzu. See, that was the fight that I thought you, you initially hurt your knee. Uh, I didn't know you hurt your knee before that fight. I didn't know that. I thought it was yeah, a I, fight. Yeah, I tore, my, my knee was tore up. I ended up having to get another surgery on my knee yeah, after, after that, that fight. I know. I, I, that's where I thought you got your, your the initial, the initial, uh, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. The AC, that was just the reoccurrence of the knee. Oh, just, okay. yeah. I just tore it up completely. Wow. Like, after I got surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I had tore, I had tore my ligaments 
And then when I forecast the zoo, um, that the, that morning, that morning the next day, I never really said anything, but I, when I would walk, my knee would just like give out on me and it was tingling. So I was like, you know, it's like, man, you want me to call the fight? I was like, nah, fight. Anything, man, it's boxing. Mm -hmm. Anything happens. Yeah. And I'm just that kind of guy. Like, you know, it's, well, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm and just too good of a fighter. I can get through it. But Tell me about that well, surgery and the rehab. Did you, did you know that from the outset you would fight again, or was it in doubt? Um... Well, I thought the fight that it would come on, you know, before that it did the second time, and I really, I really shouldn't have um, waited. I, I really shouldn't have waited another four years, or three, four years to fight him again. Um, I should have way been moved up. I, I, I was so, in my second fight with Kazu. I was so drained um, by from losing weight that. Like when I got on the scale, hmm. it hit the top and it just came down a little bit. And actually, if they would have asked me to go lose weight, like uh, some more weight, I, there's no out of just said forget it. I, I couldn't do it because that's hmm. I, I, I just lost too much weight. That was the second fight with Zoo, right? Yeah. yeah, I was so drained that if you were for me, you'd have came in the ring and just blew at me out. You'd have probably knocked me down. Hmm. Yeah. What was, I, I was just I was just drained out of my mind. What was, so the first and, and that's why that was the last fight I would fight that one for you. I, I I had to lose too much weight. Yeah. Before that you had a, you did wait four years though and, and you, you beat uh Vince Phillips, Kasha Zoo Conquer. What was that fight yeah. like hold, hold, hold on one minute, please, hold on. Okay. After after that that Kasha Zoo fight you didn't fight for fourteen months and, and you came back and you beat Bernard Harris and Frank Howtaling. Did you did you feel good on the knee right away? Did you? Huh? Did you feel good? Him. Did your knee feel good? Um. Yeah. Yeah. So rehab went successfully. Yeah, rehab went successful, man. And, you know, you you, you 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 know try to get back into it yeah. a little bit. And how'd you feel in the Vince Phillips fight? What was it like fighting Vince Phillips? <laughs> yeah, that that was it. Vince did so many great things. Not. Kazu crazy. Yep, strong right hand. That's being that's being put to sleep. Anyone he hits with that right hand, he, he hit him with hitting right hands. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Did you to knock him out? He hit him with five of them in a row. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Did, knocked it, it's crazy. But you, um, you know, to, to fight Dennis Phillips, uh, I mean, you know, I, I almost I almost felt like I was fighting another legend mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. honest with you because mm -hmm. I mean you know you come up watching this guy fight mm -hmm. um, did he catch you with the right hand at all? hell heck nah <laughs> didn't he <catch> <laughs> nah <laughs> hey I was just a little bit too slick and too yeah. fast yeah. even getting older you yeah. know yeah. Yeah, but so, I was thinking maybe he caught you once. <laughs> to beat a guy that, that beat Kasha Zoo, though, did it, did it help you? Or, did it? Well, yeah, it did, because, you know, I, I, I try to tell people that, you know, um, on, a, on a good day or something, like I, I, you know, I know what I could do with Kasha Zoo, but, you know, I, you, you catch me when my knee is gone, and then the next time you catch me is... You know, when I'm drained out of my brain, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not doing anything else. So it is what it is. Yeah. After after that fight, though, you you fought Argentinian Carlos Vilches, and then you fought Ben Tacky. He's never been down till you did it. Until me. You still got your power, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> until me. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I, I think what what caught him was the quickness. It, it's almost just like when um, Floyd. Um, dropped me. It, I never saw the punch. Mm -hmm. and it just it, it was like such a flash knockdown that I laughed when I got when I was on the ground. So you know when I when I got him, the punches were so fast he just didn't see that thing. Mm -hmm. It didn't really hurt. It didn't hurt him as bad. Yep. I, he didn't see it. Didn't see it. And, and, 
and, and I knew that. So I didn't jump right on them or anything. Like that, cause I, I knew. I knew what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you beat Ben Tacky. That was for the right to to fight for the IBF championship. But then you in, you, you ended up fighting for the... Was was that an interim fight? That was an interim title shot, right? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I ended up fighting for the interim being the IBF yeah, champion. I guess a lot more into it. I, I defended my IBF championship too. Yeah. Then I, def- I defended it in England. That's yeah, when you uh, at MEN and you fought. Actually, what was what was the Love More Endu fight like? Was that a rough one? Endu was. That was a, I'm gonna tell you, that fight was one of, probably one of my worst fights. Hmm. Um, and, and why I say that because my mother's mother, I mean my mother's, I mean my father's mother had just died. Hmm. I had to pay for the funeral. Um, so after that fight, I had to go to that. Yeah. Um, I had just found out that uh, Kasuzu hurt his leg. Mm-hmm. So that postponed that fight. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I didn't really want to be there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. and I remember your face was swollen after the fight. Yeah, yeah I, I I didn't want to be there, but no, no. I won the IBF championship. No, I, I mean, <laughs> hey, here's what it is. So did. I, I did enough to win. That's what, I did enough to win, and that that was the whole thing. Yeah. Then you went so to England. Enough to win. You fought Michael Stewart in England at the MEN Arena. How how uh, the how the Brits treat you? Um, they treated me great because it, it, the, <laughs> nobody knows the, the reason why they brought me over there. Is because they wanted me to come over to see how I was still going to look to fight uh, their guy. Michael Stewart. Huh? Michael Stewart was the guy you fought. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But they, they wanted me yeah. to, they was trying to line up a fight with uh, me and, um, what was his name? Um, from England that they, they was really big on. Who oh, hadn't? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that was and, and that's why they brought me over there to see how I was going to fight and see if they wanted me to fight to make to make that match. Yeah. Hatton was after actually Ford over there. I thought Ford over there. His promoters and his managers, nah, we're not going to touch that one just yet. Mm, nope. He was young. He was undefeated. He was yeah. Exactly. And, and what was so, that? What was the atmosphere like? Up, so that's when I ended up fighting Zoo. Mm-hmm. And the thing after that was, for me, at that Fort Zoo, they still was trying to get me to stay at 40 to go fight Hatton for all these dollars. Mm-hmm. And they still, even when I, after I lost the zoo, they still tried to get me come over there and give me all these millions of dollars to fight them over there. And I told them, nah.